A cereal box's dimensions are usually 12, 7, and 2. So I'll show you what I mean by that. I'm going to go to polygon modeling, click on this cube, and I'm going to go to poly cube. And uh, the height should be about 12 inches, 12. The width should be seven inches. And then the depth should be about two. All right. Um, also, one thing to notice, to note in Maya is that, or any, I guess, 3D program, when something's made, it's, um, what do you call it? Well, I can't really see it here in the channel box, but usually the uh, scale is uh, the object is made like you know in the middle, so it's like fifty percent. So if you put this at 0 0.5, point, I should have done it. Five, huh? Well, oh no, no, I'm sorry. I'm thinking of uh, Houdini stuff. Um. Anyway, let's just raise it on the ground right here. What I was going to say is uh, in this other program, if whatever the height is, you just put half of that and it like sits perfectly on the ground, but Maya is a bit different. Got my programs mixed up. Anyway, um, if you wanted to, you can add some segments to this. It doesn't really matter too much, but let's just do it just because. All right, so this is how, well, this is going to be our cereal box. Now, what we have to do is uh, UV this. So I'm going to click right here, and I'm going to go to UV editing. All right, so this is um, the UV editor. This is our going to be um, how we split this box, All right? So we're going to go to UV and then go to um, automatic. And what that does is that's that uh, what automatic UVing does is this. Each one of these planes works like a camera. So it looks at it from the top and it goes, all right, give me all the faces I can see from the top, which are going to be these faces right here. And then it's going to look at the bottom, all the faces I can see from the bottom, these faces, the side, this side, these faces. And it's doing it like perfectly. It's basically the four way view. You see? But it's like taking everything it sees from this view, this view, this view, and then it lays it all out. All right. Now these could look, uh, could be perfect, could be messed up. The only way to really see how it split it is by clicking this. All right. Now, if you look right here, you see how this has a V on it. Like you see how it says uh, UV one, you know, but you also see that this right here is upside down, right? Because you see this is here, but this is here. It's right side up here, but in, in the 3D view, which is the one that really matters, it's upside down. So let's flip it the other way, right? And to do that, we're gonna press E and we're gonna hold down J. And what, what it happens is we get, uh, well, it's hard to see, but when you hold down J, you know, you get 90 degree, uh, no, 15 degree increments. So this is our face right here. And that, and that checkerboard still there. It's just, we, I took off the visibility of it. We can see it's right there. We can just put it, let's just put it right here, right? Cause it's good. And let's look at this one, double click on it. So I can double click to get the whole, it's called a UV shell, or I can go to UV shell and click on it and it gets the whole thing. Or I can go to UV, choose a point and then double click and get the whole things. So there's three ways to get it. Faces, double click, move, UV, double click, move, and uh, UV shell, click, move. So this one's good too. Let's look at these on the side. Those are looking like perfect squares. And that's exactly what we want. We want them to be perfect squares. Sometimes when you UV something, the squares aren't uh, perfect. Like, um, let's see if I can get something like that. 
if I choose this cube right here, and then I just go like this. Now, if I select this cube, look at these UVs, right? These these UVs are um used, you know, they're using automatic UV, so they came out perfect. These uh, this is the default UV that comes with all cubes in um in Maya, so it kind of it's looking bad. It's looking stretched. Now, if I click on this. Let's see if we can find a face. So this right here, this face is this face right here. So if I move it, you see how it's attached to the other faces? So this is all one UV shell right here, which is not what we want. But this is attached to this face. And we see how like distorted it is, it's stretched. It's not like squares like this one is. So. I'm going to do shift right click create UV shell, which basically uh, if I turn off this, we can see better separates this from the rest of them. And if I press R, I mean, uh, wait, yeah, R to scale and scale like this. Now they're starting to be squares, right? And we still see the letters. I'm going to press E, hold down J. So just basically showing you how it works, right? So this is now looking good, right? Because it's square. So any image that goes on this is gonna look perfect on this, but the rest of them, it's gonna look jacked up because they're, you know, they're stretched like that. So just telling you that, you know, just so you know that these came out perfect. And so anything that you put on this, will look perfect. And also notice that this before when it was square, see how it was distorted. But now that it's like this, it's stretched out, it kind of looks like this, like the actual shape is like a nice rectangle. And the picture looks right. But if it's squished, then it doesn't look correct. All right, so that's just a little bit about how UVs work. I'll delete this. Go back to here. So okay, so um, these faces right here, or well, let's go to UV shell even, click it, press uh, W, let's move it. So the whole point of this is that these need to be inside of this uh, area right here. All right, so put this here. All right, so I have both of these. And these, this one is my bottom piece, right? So we can just take this. Let's just put it on the bottom. Let's press E to rotate, hold down J. And now we have this, all right? So this is the bottom. This is our top piece. E, hold down J. Now I'm just doing this to uh, for organization. So I know that this is the top, this is the bottom. And then I can say this is, we can say this is our front and this is our back, right? And these are our sides. So I'll take this and I'll hold down shift, take this one. And I'll just put this right here, right? So we have our box and these are our UVs. Now, something to note is you want these to be as big as possible, but you also want them to stay all the same. Um, all the, you, you want them to be all the same size. So if I scale them one up, I want them all to scale at the same size. You don't want it to be like this, basically. Like one of these to be larger, a lot larger than the other ones. You don't want that. So one thing I like to do is I like to take this and put on this checkerboard right here. And I like to scale this because you want only want to keep it in this tile. 
And this is called a UDIM tile. You only want to keep it here. So if I scale this up, you see how it spreads into the other areas? That's no good. So I'm pressing Control Z. And I just want to scale it up just a little bit until it pops out. Then I'll scale it down. All right. So I just like to do that just so I can get the biggest, uh, my texture as large as I can. OK. So now I'm going to make an image out of this and take it into Photoshop. So I'm going to click on this right here, left click. And this is going to go to my desktop. This says Remy UV, but instead I'm going to name this to um, Serial Maya UV, All right? 2048 is the perfect size. Let's do Targa, um, apply and close. All right. So now I'm going to my desktop. I'm, right, I'm finding my file, I'm right clicking on it, open with Adobe Photoshop. Okay. Now I'm in Photoshop and here is my, um, uh, here are my UVs. So I'm going to um, bring a cereal box texture in let me stop sharing this. Go here. Share screen. All right, so I just put cereal box texture, filter, and then I went to extra large, extra large, right? So this is what I'm getting right here. Let's see. And also, you can do this with your own pictures, too. Let me show you. Uh, Vintage cereal boxes unfolded. Hmm. This is low resolution, but I like to use it. But let me see if I can find something a little better. Um, no. Yeah, I'll just choose one of these regular ones. Uh, I just want it to be crisp. See how they're kind of like faded? Which wouldn't matter if they were like far away. Yeah, I'll just do this one. So right click, save image as. And then we'll do uh, serial, put it in. So now I'm in Photoshop. I have my file and all I'm gonna do is drag it in to um, to Photoshop. And now I'm going to just scale it. I'm just pulling on this, on these handles. Just have them right here. And I'm just going to double click right now. So I have my cereal layer with the cereal box and the background. So right now I'm going to chop this up and place the images on uh, their, their uh, tile. So I'm going to click this. Um, Rectangular marquee tool. And let's just do the front first, right? So front. 
And if I need to zoom in, I'm holding Alt and I'm scrolling with the wheel to get in here. So let's do that again. I'll get this. Now I'm gonna um, separate this by cutting it. So I'm gonna right click layer via copy. So I'm gonna hide the old one. And now this is, uh, now I'm doing Alt and scrolling back again so I can see my whole uh, canvas, I guess you can say. Um, yeah, so it separated that. I'll click on this. I'll do a Control T to get this transformation. And I'll place this on here. I'll scale this up a little bit that way, a little bit up this way. All right, so it's a little bit bigger, I mean, smaller than our tile. So let's just fake it. I'm gonna hold down Shift and just drag this up a little bit. When you see how it does like a snapping kind of thing, if you just press the arrow key, you like press down and cover it. And I'm just gonna hold down Shift and get this right here and double click. So yeah, we faked it a little bit, but it's gonna look good as long as it covers these tiles. And if you need to see for sure, click on opacity and kind of you can take it down and uh, click on this tool right here and move it around if you need to see where it is a little better. Let me take this opacity back up to 100. Double click to seal the deal, it's all good. All right, so now I'm gonna go back to my serial layer, click on this, and I'm gonna hide this one just so I can see it a little bit clearer. And um, I'm just gonna chop all these up all at once, right? So I'm gonna click on this marquee tool. I'm gonna select this, get this right here, this back. Right click and I'm going to do layer via copy. You see how it gave me this? And I'm just going to say layer two. Well, I'm going to do a uh, layer back just so I know. Layer front. This isn't necessary necessarily. You know, I'm just showing you this if you want to be a little bit more organized. But um, clicking on this, I'll hide these two. So there's the front and the back we already have chopped. Let's just go ahead and get the sides, right? On the side right here, right click, layer via copy. And I'll go right here, select this, right click, layer via copy. Whoa, what happened? Oh, I wasn't selecting the right layer. You know what, let me just do this just to do it side. Select it again, right click, layer via copy. Side two, side, side B, let's do that. Um, select it again, let's get this. Right click. Layer view copy. And that one will be our top. Select this. The bottom, let's do this one right here. Layer view copy. bottom right so now i'm going to hide the original box that i chopped up and i'm going to select all the uh parts and just scale them so i'm just going to select this just if you have this selected and just touch and touch and go right so we'll go right here we'll do a control t oh no yeah control t and just scale so, so you want to keep it as uniform as possible up until the point where it gets it's a stretch. But check this out, right? I kind of cheated on the front and the back. But what about this? What if I don't want to cheat? Holding the alt, scrolling in. What if I don't want to cheat and stretch this? What I could do 
Let's be a little bit creative with it and do this, all right? So this is my side. I'm going to right click, or oh, actually, I'm on my side there. I'm going to grab my marquee tool and I'll just select this part right here. And if I make a bad selection, I just click one time. I just kind of like do it. If it's bad, just click one time and do it again. So I'll make this selection right here. Right click, layer via copy, right? And I'm just gonna name this, uh, I don't know, side piece, <laughs> right? So this is side piece. Let me hide this. And actually, let me keep the side piece. Let me hide this. So I have this little side piece right here, right? And I'll just do control T. And now I'll just hold down shift and I'll just stretch this. So now it's covering that little area that it had that, you know, that was a little bit messed up. So now if I add it here and I take this layer and I drag it on top, it just kind of covers up that background without me having to stretch it. And I can do the same thing here. So there goes my side B, I'll just select it. I'll select this right here. Well, I'll just do this, right? Select this, right click, layer via copy. Hide this, control T, control Z. Oh, I'm just gonna hold down shift, all right? So I'm holding down shift, it's like a free transform kind of thing. I'll just pull it over here, pull this over here, you know? And it doesn't matter if I'm like over it, just as long as I'm covering up this uh, UV tile. It's all good. Double click to seal the deal. And I'll add this one back here and I'll drag this layer on top. So when I look in Maya, I won't see all that craziness. But actually I can go here again, holding down Alt and Control. I can just do Control T, hold down Shift. So we can do that. All right, so let me go back here. Let me grab this move tool and just click on the ones I want to move. I think if you do control zero, yeah, control zero uh, makes it like uh, maximizes the canvas to your screen. So so let me make this a little bigger. Remember, as big as you can uniformly. Oh, look, I'll just stretch this over this whole thing. Double click, it's all good. All right. So what do we have? We have to get this one. So same thing, just click stretch. Like I said, as long as it's covering the tile, it's fine. Hold down shift, and I'll just stretch it a bit. Double click, it's fine. The This was one was the top, this is the bottom. Put it here, stretch it. So it's kind of like, in a way, it's like a coloring book. You know? And you just gotta fill it in with the right colors. but you can go outside the lines. That's the difference. Uh, I had everything. Well, I thought I did the top. I guess I didn't. I could have sworn I did it actually. Let me see. Oh, I did do the top. Oh, we had a top right here. Take it, drag it down. Let me just bring these on just because. 
Stretch and move. And I'll do the same thing. Right click, I mean, select it, give me this. I'll just choose this face. Right click, lay over your copy. Um, Just put top piece right there. And I'll just hold down shift and cover up this whole thing. Shift. All right, double click. Put this on top. You know, uh, I could like paint over this too, but I don't think I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna keep it just like this today. All right. Um, well, you know what? Might as well. Where is the tool? Clone stamp. So what I'll do is hold down control, no, is it alt, get a target, then you hold down control and it kind of takes where you took the target from, alt, click this and then paint. So it's basically painting, alt, press this, where I pressed alt at. Alt, alt, alt. Oh, all right. Oh, so this is if we really want to make it pretty. All right, so I'm done with this uh, hidden serial layer. It's the background layer is right here. Now I'll go to file, save as, and uh, I'll just put it right here. What's this desktop? I'll just name it Maya. All right. It's gonna, oh, it says TIFF. I meant to do it as JPEG. It doesn't matter, but let's just, let me do it as JPEG anyway. Uh, JPEG, JPEG, desktop, Showbox UV, save. Okay. Stop sharing. Now I'm back inside of Maya. I have my cereal box right here. Let's go to a regular screen. Now I'm going to right click, assign new material, Arnold, AI standard surface. On color right here, click on this. Go to file. Click on file. Find that UV I just made. Now I'm going to type, just remember this, four five, six. Oh, there it is, All right? You don't have to do four, five, six. I just do that to show you that four is the wireframe, five is the solid, six is the texture, and then you have this right here. That's how you put a UV on a, a cereal box in Maya.